Today we're kicking off our series on Death Guard with a look at the core of the army, the Plague Marines. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, where today we're kicking off our series on the Death Guard with a datasheet overview of the Plague Marines and a bunch of tactics on their combos and synergy. In the video we'll look at their datasheet and war gear options, all their character support, stratagems and other synergies in game, and some ideas and thoughts for using them on the tabletop. I think the Plague Marines are a unit that have got a lot stronger in that tradition. Their disgusting resilience and ability to hang on to objectives really is very valued, and they're a pretty excellent troops choice for a very strong army. In the background, the Plague Marines are Chaos Space Marines dedicated to the god Nurgle. Their corpulent, bloated and rotting body is protruding from their armour, with an inhuman tolerance to pain and even the most severe of injuries. The Death Guard were the first of the Plague Marines, and when their Primarch Mortarian led their fleet into the warp to assist the Warmaster Horus's Siege of Terror, the fleet became trapped within the warp, and the Destroyer Plague and Nurgle's Rot began to infest the ships. With little other choice, the Legion turned to the worship of Nurgle, gleefully accepted by the Grandfather, their bodies forever transfigured by the afflictions of Nurgle's blessing. In battle, Plague Marines typically carry the Bolter and Plague Knife, often employed at brutal close range, shrugging off the worst hits that the enemy has to offer, and bringing death and despair to whoever stand against them. Let's see what these guys can do on the tabletop then. So Plague Marines are of course a troop's choice for the Death Guard, which is the role that we're we'll focusing on for them today, although they can also be fielded as elites with regular Chaos Space Marines, though this way they will miss out on quite a lot of the buffs and synergies available to them. At base, they're 18 points a model in 9th edition, and for that you get 1 Plague Champion and 4 Plague Marines for a 90 point squad. They've got a fairly standard Chaos Space Marine profile, with the exception that they have a movement of 5 inches and a toughness of 5, so slower and more resilient, and they also get that disgustingly resilient special rule, which allows them to shrug off wounds that they take on the roll of a 5+. And they also get the more standard Chaos Space Marine special rules, such as Death to the False Emperor, Hateful Assault for extra attacks in the first round of combat, and Malicious Follies for extra bolter shots if they're standing still. At base, each Plague Marine is armed with a Plague Knife, a Bolt Gun, Blight Grenades and Crack Grenades. I think most people are familiar with Bolters and Crack Grenades, Plague Knives are essentially just a basic close combat weapon with a Plague Weapon special rule, allowing them to re-roll wound rolls of 1 as base, and also unlock some nice combos that they can use. And quite similarly, Blight Grenades basically have the profile of a Frag Grenade, a Grenade D6 Strength 3 weapon with no AP and 1 damage, but again are Plague Marines, and there are some specific combos that can make Blight Grenades ridiculously scary indeed, that we'll get onto. They're a very flexible unit, they can be fielded in squads of 5 to 20, and they can take all sorts of war gear which will go through piece by piece. They do also have one further special rule, which is their Vectors of Death and Disease special rule, which basically means if you equip them with some of the more combat orientated builds, either two Plague Knives, a Plague Knife and a Bubotic Axe, or a Mace of Corruption and a Bubotic Axe, it has an attack's characteristic of two instead of one. It basically gives you a bit of an extra reward for taking some of their close combat options, though this isn't given to things like the Flail of Corruption or their Great Plague Cleaver, both of which can allow them to deal quite a lot of damage. So let's go through their options now then. First of all, you have the unit size that you can choose. In general, I think that multiple different numbers can be viable here. Keeping them as a five-man squad really isn't all that bad. It will avoid you any extra damage from blast weapons and coherency issues. I think it's not unreasonable to increase it towards 10 though, if you want a bit more of a robust unit, maybe to defend some of the more fancy upgrades that you bought in it. And you could most certainly go for the fluffy Nurgle number of 7. Though if you want to use Plague Marines as damage dealers, then you could just potentially ignore the coherency and blast weapon disadvantages and go for a max size squad of 20. That often is how you're going to get the most value out of your command points, and it makes it very viable to stack multiple different stratagems on the unit per turn and allow them to cause an absolute ton of damage. In terms of war gear, that Plague Champion can replace his Plague Knife with a Plague Sword, which is free and allows him to reroll all wounds, so it's not really the worst idea in the world unless you're thinking of using that Plague Knife Strastium Trench Fighters, which gives them an extra attack. You can also trade his Bolt Gun for either a Bolt Pistol, Plasma Pistol, or Plasma Gun. I personally wouldn't be as interested in the Bolt Pistol or Plasma Pistol, but the Plasma Gun really is quite interesting, allowing you to get an extra special weapon in the squad. The only real disadvantage is that if you are overheating and you don't have a source of reroll ones, you do potentially kill really quite a big, powerful, and durable model. So there are positives and negatives to having that on the champion. Finally, if you're looking for a maximal close combat damage dealing squad, you can take a power fist, which again isn't the worst idea in the world, particularly if you're in a fairly big squad, and you're quite likely to survive a charge from the enemy for your champion to be able to fight back with some nasty damage. I'd weigh up the power fist though against the other melee options that the squad can take. In terms of special weapons, again you've got a few options. 
No matter how big the squad, two Plague Marines can replace their bolt gun with either a Plague Spewer, essentially a heavy flamer with the Plague reroll special rule. I think this will be a lot more interesting if they do get an extra few inches range, much like most flamers are going to. A Plague Belcher, which is essentially a standard flamer with the Plague rule, after the two I'd typically go for the Plague Spewer myself. A Blight Launcher, which is 24 inches, Assault 2, Strength 6, AP-2, Damage D3 and a Plague Weapon. These ones cost 10 points, and I think they're really quite a decent upgrade for the unit. It's basically a decent range, very general purpose weapon. No matter what you point it at, the firepower won't really be wasted, which is really quite a positive in a durable Death Guard army. Alternatively, you can just go for a standard Melter Gun or Plasma Gun, both of which will cost 10 points each, and again are pretty reasonable choices for amping up their damage output. The Plasma Gun in particular does have good synergy with their 18-inch rapid fire that they get, thanks to the inexorable advanced special rule but again does give you a non-insignificant chance of killing your own expensive models, and rather than letting your opponent have to do it, and might undermine the unit's durability a little bit. In general, if you're wanting the unit to deal more damage, the Blight Launchers or the Plasma Guns will be my default options. Maybe think about Melter Guns if you're using something like a Terax Drill, or are planning on outflanking the unit. Next, unlike a lot of troops' choices similar to them, they have quite a lot of different melee options. You really can deck out the squad pretty heavily for close combat, for a start, every single Plague Marine can replace his bolter with a Plague Knife, which might seem like a bit of an unusual choice, even if it does give them one extra attack in close combat, but honestly it isn't always the worst idea if you are thinking about using certain stratagems and psychic powers to make them a bit more fighting. Particularly Blades of Putrefaction on the Plague Knives, you might be glad that you've got the extra melee attack, rather than having a little bit of extra light infantry shooting. The ways that you can select the weapons are fairly interesting, you can take the Bubotic Axes per every single Plague Marine in the unit should you want to. They're basically just Power Axes that have reroll ones to wound for being Plague Weapons, but they will cost you 5 extra points per model and rob the unit of its shooting power. If you want a Mace of Corruption, then you have to take it as a pair with the Bubotic Axe, so you're basically locked into having 10 points of upgrade on each Plague Marine, so that would be 28 points per model. And in general, I think you want to do that just to unlock the Mace of Corruption, as that's Strength plus 2, AP minus 1, and Flat Damage 3 which is very significant. For me, it's just a little bit expensive for what it does, though with Gravis Armour Space Marines being quite common in the meta at the moment, the flat damage 3 might just be a little bit more use than normal. Then you've got the option to take up to two of either Flails of Corruption or the Great Plague Cleaver, each of which costs 15 points in ninth. A Great Plague Cleaver is essentially similar to a Space Marine Thunderhammer, except with damage D6 and being a Plague Weapon, and you still do suffer the minus 1 to hit, and you will only be hitting with 1 attack or 2 with Hateful Assault. Unfortunately, I just don't really think it's quite worth the points for the few amount of attacks that the Plague Marines get. After the melee weapons, my favourite is the Flail of Corruption, which again is 15 points. It's strength plus 2, AP minus 2, and damage 2, so a nice generalist profile. You make D3 attacks for each attack made with the weapon, so that would be an average of 4 attacks if you had one of those and you had Hateful Assault active. And possibly the most useful thing about it is that if you're fighting light infantry, any extra damage that you inflict that overkills any one infantry model isn't lost, it just goes on to the next guy. Theoretically, if you had a flail of corruption, all of your attacks hit and wounded and went through armour, you could kill up to 8 infantry models just literally with a play marine with 2 attacks. I think it's a really nice generalist option, and it means that your opponent's really not going to want to charge your play marine squad with either light infantry or 2 wound infantry such as primaris marines. Finally, you can take an Icon of Despair for 10 points. Despite it looking quite cool though, I really wouldn't bother. It's 10 points just for a minus 1 leadership debuff aura, and that's not really worth it. So for war gear overall, I like plasma guns and blight launchers for the special weapons, and if gearing up for close combat, would consider taking two plague knives, and potentially seeding in a couple of flails of corruption. I would remember that keeping them cheap is a perfectly viable solution as well, either just for camping objectives, or using things like stratagems and buff characters to get the absolute most out of their blight grenades or bolters. Let's talk about combos and synergies for the Plague Marines in-game then. First of all, as a troop's choice, they do get objectives secured, which in 9th edition has got a lot more relevance than it did before. Opponents will be trying to take the centre objectives away from you, and if you've got an absolute ton of hard-to-shift Plague Marines standing there, then they're really going to struggle. We mentioned it briefly before, but Inexorable Advance is great with their bolters and plasma guns. Getting 18-inch rapid fire as they move up is exactly what they'd like, and it means that you don't have to make the trade-off too much between standing still and using their malicious volleys, or getting the extra movement and positioning that they ideally want to be having. Plague Marines have access to an absolute ton of buff characters, and you really could go very heavy on a big army list of Plague Marines and characters to buff them up should you want to. 
Most simply, you can get a Chaos Lord just for reroll ones to hit. A nice simple uncomplicated booster damage is never a bad thing, plus he's quite fighty. Noxious Blightbringers became some of the best support characters for Death Guard after the War of the Spider update, as they can be upgraded with a relic to give all Plague Marines a 5 plus invul save when they're within 7 inches of them. This is an excellent increase to their durability, as high AP weapons are great to deal with power armor, and this really ruins that sort of efficiency. He also has a special rule for getting a little bit more movement out of them if they need to advance as well. The Biologus Putrefier is a great unit to keep around Death Guard units as well, as he's the one who can amp up their Blight Grenades to be absolutely lethal. Even a small unit of Death Guard with Blight Grenades, when combined with both him and a Stratagem, can stack a ridiculous amount of scary mortal wounds on an enemy unit at close range, as we'll mention in a bit when we get onto Stratagems. He's worth including pretty much just for that though. The Plague Surgeon can allow you to reroll ones of Disgusting Resilience, which is a small but meaningful durability increase, and in a Mortarian's Chosen Sons detachment, that can be increased to ones and twos via a stratagem, which I would typically use if I was taking that detachment. The Tallyman can allow you to reroll or hit rolls in the fight phase for Death Guard units within 7 inches, and I'd most certainly consider him if I was thinking about building around a more close combat orientated Death Guard blob. Rerolling all failed hits, plus Blades of Putrefaction and a Stratagem or two could really make those Plague Knives go through most units in the game. And the Foul Blight Spawn, as well as packing some excellent close range shooting with that Plague Sprayer, is also a pretty handy reactive defensive unit, as it could make enemy units charging your Plague Marines fight last, perhaps giving you the chance to flail at a fighty enemy unit with some Plague Flails, and hopefully kill a fair bunch of them before they even strike. If you're running a large amount of Plague Marines, then having some Mephitic Blight Horrors around isn't the worst idea either. They can give you the benefit of cover even if they're right out in the open, and with the points changes or lack of them in 9th edition, they've got a fair bit stronger, and if two-shot multi-melters happen for them as well, they could definitely be worth taking in their own right, so a very solid fire support backup to your Plague Marines. Death Guard also have access to Sorcerers and the Malignant Plague Caster, and again if you want yet more durability, you can think about using Miasma of Pestilence on the Plague Marines for minus one to hit or the excellent Blades of Putrefaction to soup up their close combat and make them fairly lethal. It basically gives you plus one to wound rolls, and if you roll any sixes, that will mean that you get a mortal wound on your opponent as well. Say if you had a 10-man Death Guard unit with the dual plague knives, that could be 30 attacks, which would translate into around about 3 or 4 mortal wounds, never mind the absolute stack of wounds that you'd hit on the target with no AP. We could also ally in Sorcerers to use the Dark Hereticus Discipline, powers such as Prescience, plus one to hit, or warp time to get them up the board very quickly, rarely go amiss in any chaos list. Finally, there's a couple of notable Warlord traits and relics. The Worm Spitter Pistol from War of the Spider is pretty good in combo with Death Guard Plague Marines. If you have a character that shoots as an enemy unit with this, then it can allow your bolters to count as plague weapons when targeting the unit, giving you the reroll ones to hit, and also potentially unlocking other synergies. Perhaps more commonly used, there's of course the tried and tested Arch Contaminator Warlord trait, which basically allows you to reroll all wounds with plague weapons, which I guess could be stacked with Worm Spitter as well. But Arch Contaminator is excellent in combination with those plague knives or the Blight Grenades, and indeed usually tends to be a buff to a Death Guard list wherever it is included. Out of the many character support units, I think that you can go various different ways with the Death Guard. If I was investing in a fairly heavy Plague Marine strategy, I'd be very tempted to get an Obnoxious Blightbringer with the Invul upgrade to give multiple units that save, and I'd want to have a Biologus Putrefier somewhere around just to have a devastating counter-attack with those Blight Grenades if needed. Basically all of them are useful, but I'm not necessarily sure that it's worth investing in every single upgrade for the Plague Marines, you really have to pick and choose what you want them to be good at. Now we get onto Stratagems, and Death Guard gains an absolute ton from War of the Spider, which very conveniently happened at the turn to 9th edition, where with the new command point and detachment rules, they now have far more command points to spend on these stratagems. As a common theme, there are plenty of ways that Death Guard Plague Marines can up their damage outputs, though if you activate all of them at once, you are going to burn through your command points pretty quickly. From the core codex, I'd like to mention Cloud of Flies, which is the one that can be used to make your infantry unit untargetable if it isn't the closest to the enemy, which could be great for securing an objective in 9th, and veterans of the long war, the tried and tested plus one to wound rolls. Being so universally useful, it generally tends to make an appearance in most games with Chaos Space Marines in it. It works quite well with anything with absolutely mass shooting, so to say if you're blazing away with 40 bolter shots from a big unit of 20 Plague Marines. From War of the Spider, we have Virulent Rounds. This is another way to make all the bolters in the unit Plague Weapons for just one command point, and also if they roll any wound rolls of six, then it gets to be AP minus four for that attack as well. On a huge unit of bolters, this really is quite a significant buff, particularly against anything with reasonable armour such as Space Marines. 
Keeping with Bolters, you could potentially stack that with Relentless Volleys. This costs one command point if you've got five or less Plague Marines in the unit, or two command points if it's six or more. This will make Bolters Rapid Fire 2, so essentially double the fire output of the unit. So say if you were within Rapid Fire range or using Hateful Volleys, then you could potentially be spitting out 80 Bolter shots from a single Plague Marine unit, and it will be pretty excellent to stack with virulent rounds for extra damage on all of those shots, and veterans of the long war to get them at better rolls to wound. That little combo could take down entire formations of light infantry. For combat, for combat you can take the pick of three different buffs. Miasmal Afflictions for two command points can make one enemy unit within one inches of your Plague Marines minus one toughness. Could be really potent on things like Space Marines if you're taking them down from toughness 5 to toughness 4, or toughness 4 to toughness 3 though it is a bit pricey at 2 CP. Trench Fighters, which is one command point for an extra attack with a Plague Knife. So if you did have units armed with two Plague Knives, then that's theoretically four attacks per model with Hateful Assault. Not bad at all if you're stacking that with Blades of Putrefaction. And you could potentially further stack that with Creeping Blight, which is one command point for any wound roll of a 6 with a Plague Weapon. You get AP-4 when it strikes the enemy, so it could be good for chewing through large tough units with a lot of Plague Marine attacks. I'd say all of these have at least a reasonably high command point cost, so I'd only really be tempted to use them if it's going to make the difference of swinging a big combat, and I'd be particularly more tempted if you had something like Blades of Putrefaction in play, so these extra attacks and abilities just have a little bit more bang for their buck. One strategy that I really quite like is Putrid Fecundity, which is an expensive but very powerful buff to their disgusting resilient role. It's two command points for ten or fewer Plague Marines, or three command points for more than this and it lets you add one to the Disgusting Resilient rule, basically meaning that you'll pass them on a 4+, plus under normal circumstances. It's basically an instant 33% boost to the unit's durability, and it's really powerful when combined with something like a Plague Assertion's rerolls, particularly if you're Mortarian's Chosen Sons, you could be passing Disgusting Resilient on a 4+, plus, and then also rerolling 1s and 2s. Even if your opponent surpasses your high toughness and decent armour, then not that many wounds are going to go through. It is expensive, but if you just absolutely need a unit to live for a turn, then I think it's a very valuable one to remember. You can use it when they're chosen as a target for the attack as well, so you don't have to declare it early at the start of the phase or anything. Finally, I think that potentially one of the most powerful combos that you can use with Plague Marines is the Black Grenade Bombardment combo. Black Bombardment allows all of your Plague Marines to throw Black Grenades, not just one of them, and of course if they're standing next to a Biologus Putrefier, those Black Grenades are buffed, they go to Strength 4 and Damage 2. On top of that, if you roll a wound roll of a 6+, plus, then you also get a mortal wound on the target. Now that's already quite scary, and could pose a big threat to a lot of infantry units, but you can buff it in a few other ways as well. You can use the Overwhelming Generosity Stratagem, which gives Plague Weapons an extra 6 inch of range, allowing you to throw them at 12 inch range, which means that you could activate the combo when coming out of Deep Strike, or out of a Terax Drill for example. You can then activate Veterans of the Long War, which gives them plus one to wound, which does amp up the damage of the Black Grenades, but also gets you to have the Mortal Wounds on the roll of 5+, plus. and you could stand them next to an Arch Contaminator Warlord to re-roll those wound rolls, and just drown your enemy in tons and tons of Mortal Wounds. There's pretty much nothing in the game that can take so many Mortal Wounds happily. If you're willing enough to invest some CP, and you have a Biologus Putrefier next to a bunch of Plague Marines, then it means they're near enough guaranteed to delete virtually any unit in the game. For damage dealing, I think it's probably the strongest way that Plague Marines can be used. Finally, we've talked about transports a little bit, but the two main options that I would consider are of course the Ubiquitous Rhino, and also the Terax Drill, which you can get from Forge World. Rhinos are pretty useful in 9th edition, an extra durable shell, disgorging, disgorging equally durable objective secured troops, really is going to keep any objectives locked down, and it might mean that you have a safe bunker to launch an attack with some black grenades from the following turn. I've seen a few Death Guard lists use the Terax Drill, which is basically a way that you can drill up and deep strike a unit of Plague Marines, sort of like a Chaos Drop Pod, and on top of that the drill itself can be a decent threat in later turns, it can do some decent damage against vehicles. I think Plague Marines are really quite a good fit for this, they can do a little bit of shooting and close combat, so it means that they can get in amongst the enemy, cause a ton of damage, and maybe steal objectives from under the enemy's nose. In terms of using Plague Marines in-game, I think you really can go a few different ways of them, none of which are particularly right or wrong, but might just be used in a bit of a different style. You can just keep them very cheap and hold them as battle line objective secured squads to hold down objectives, while hopefully the enemy is distracted by other things like demon engines running amok. In general, I'd typically be tempted to use five-man squads of these, keep them in cover, blaze away with a few bolters, maybe consider a couple of blight launchers to deal a little bit more damage at longer range. If you actually want the Plague Marines on the battle line to do a bit more damage though, particularly if the enemy is pushing on your units, 
I would typically consider getting some bigger units of them, maybe units of 10 or roundabout there, just so it is worth using some of the fancy stratagems on them, such as souping up their melee or range damage output as you see fit and as the battle unfolds. I'd be tempted to get Noxious Blightbringers for invul saves, and potentially use a bunch of the other special characters as to which you think will bring value to your units the most, maybe tool up the squads with a couple of special weapons, and maybe a flail of corruption or two, so they're actually a unit that your opponent doesn't want to charge or be in combat with. You could certainly earmark a few command points for some big damage stratagems, maybe unleashing that fairly pricey bolter combo, or combining blades of putrefaction with trench fighters and some other melee buffs. Finally, as we said with transports, you could think about using them as more aggressive threats, either using a Rhino or a Terex drill to get them up the board, or maybe thinking about even strategic reserving them and turning up on their opponent's flanks or rear. I think again, maybe a unit of around about 10 or so would be a reasonable shout, and I think about deploying them with a Biologicus Putrefier to be able to unleash the Black Grenades, and maybe slightly more strongly consider their melee options, such as Flails of Corruption, or maybe building them with dual Plague Knives. Generally deploying a big durable unit of Plague Marines to contest a slightly weaker flank really is going to be something your opponent might struggle with. They're tough enough that they're not going to go away without some dedicated firepower. Overall, I think the Plague Marines are a very solid durable troops choice and a great in 9th edition, and a real asset to the Death Guard army. They've got a ton of big synergies and interesting options, and I think that War of the Spider has improved the unit to no end. I'll be honest that the news that Space Marines getting two wounds has made the Death Guard play Marines potentially even more scary. Of course, we will have to wait and see exactly what their points increase to after this, but having disgusting resilience really counters one of the main weaknesses of two wound troops, which is their susceptibility to being shot off the board by damage two weapons. I think the two wound play Marines are likely going to be an absolute nightmare to remove from objectives, and really could be a power build going into the later edition, obviously depending on if anything else changes. So I hope you've enjoyed the first video in the Death Guard series. We'll be hopefully covering the other units in the Codex over the next few weeks, so feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. Let me know if you can think of any other combos or things that I missed with Plague Marines, or any options that have been particularly working out well for you. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I'd just like to mention that I do have an Element Games affiliate link, which you can find in the video description below. And if you buy anything from it in the UK, then a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics without costing you any more at time of purchase. So if you are looking to pick up some Plague Marines or virtually anything else, then feel free to give it a look. They're a UK-based store, and they've always been very reliable for me. Alternatively, if you live in the USA or Canada, I do have an Amazon affiliate link down there as well. Again, if you are thinking about buying anything off Amazon, I would like to help keep the channel going. If you buy something after clicking the link, a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics, again without costing you any more. Both can just be a way to help support the channel on things that you were already going to buy. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, looking forward to more Death Guard videos, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.